Hello, listeners near, far, and light years away. This is the weekly What's Up. I'm Jay. It's your boy Damien. <laughs> Hello, I'm Nick. I like <laughs> this. High energy. It's good. <laughs> Here on the weekly What's Up, we challenge ideas, provoke thought, and review various art forms from the filthy planet Earth. Coming up this week, we'll be discussing the film Hush by Katie Sigil and Mike Flanagan. But first, a word from our sponsor. C- is that Sigil or Siegel? I don't know. I think it's Siegel. Yeah. Oh, well. I thought Mike Flanagan was the one that uh. Um, but a, it was written. I don't even know name. It was written by Katie Siegel and Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan directed it and actually... Directed it, yeah. yeah. and Katie Siegel actually played Maddie, like she was the star. Oh, she looked like a Katie. <laughs> uh, that's how I, I actually kind of like figured that. Because she... That looked like Katie. I feel that. <laughs> Sorry, and I'm like, you, you have a Katie sort of face. It, she did, though. That was the real disease that she suffered from that Chill. actually made her deaf and mute. <laughs> Katie face. <laughs> she had bacterial meningitis that affected her That's hearing. Right. And... Spoilers! Spoilers, <laughs> you guys! Spoilers. I think that w- but that was revealed, like, <laughs> I think, like, two minutes and 30 seconds into the movie. So it's... It was on the back of her book, yeah. Yeah, yeah they so. need, yeah, need to give her a reason, like... She can't just be deaf to be deaf. Right? What was her book about? Apparently some girl named Erin who doesn't die in the second book. And that's the extent of my knowledge yeah. on the book. Another book in the movie is the uh, novel Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. And that's why <laughs> yeah. I immediately identified with Katie. I'm just like, she reads Stephen King. I do that. <laughs> Let's go. So maybe she was writing like a horror novel. How did we figure out the gender of the Mercedes? How what? Is it a mister? How is it a mister? He signs the letter to the detective, Mr. Mercedes. <laughs> Mercedes is his name? No, because he was known as the Mercedes killer, and he was trying to taunt the detective who worked on the case into committing suicide. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> he would kill people with an, a Mercedes. Well, it was it was a Those one-time mass killing event. He stole it. From who? <laughs> Mrs. Mercedes? <laughs> <laughs> what is this tangent we're on? We're discussing... Because I want to figure out what's Mr. That's how he identified himself. In the letter. As Mr. Mercedes? Yeah. Yeah. The that, mask killer? That's what he chose to go well, by. He, he didn't go by... That's a pretty dumb name. No one can spell Mercedes killer. anyways. There's like four E's in this. Came <laughs> pronounced half of them. That's, that's a dumb name. Good job, Stephen King. So, the movie. <laughs> so, I'm just going to sort of, like, walk us through the movie with this synopsis, and you guys can jump in. That's a fancy word. A synopsis? A synopsis. Can you call it something easier for me to understand? What's the one? No, what's the one for, like, science? Like a small short story for science? version. Yeah, you uh, says it for uh, hi- a, a no. hypothesis? Yeah, it's like that word, but for English. <laughs> what? I understand. Hypothesis. Yeah, they they kind of sound similar. Synopsis, hypothesis. I get it. Because because they're the same thing, but one's for experiments. Synopsis, hypothesis, hippopotamus. Hypothesis. There we go. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> so we're talking about a movie, and <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just <laughs> just can't. Right now. <laughs> just can't. <laughs> I'll you know I'll just kind of slowly walk us through with my I almost said hypothesis with my synopsis, <laughs> and we're gonna be fine. Maddie Young, her last name is Young. You didn't even know her first know name when we Young. started that. I actually I know I know it's Young. Okay. Young's such a cool last name. Yeah, it's cool. I enjoy it. But they're old. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10 last would, name. Would you say old woman young? I guess you would have to. Unless they want to unless they want to change their name or something, I don't know. Change it to old after she gets her like mid age. When once she hits 45, she changes her last name to middle aged. Yeah. <laughs> so, Maddie Maddie middle aged. Maddie middle aged. Dude, we're like 20 minutes into this and we haven't even started this movie yet. I just don't 
we've we've rated her name and we talked about the book that she reads. <laughs> We're all about detail. We have, like, focused on the two most unimportant aspects that we possibly could have found. You're no. Like, you're like, next, George or Greg the next thing we're going to focus on is her eye is. color. What color was it? Was it brown or blue? I don't know. I believe I don't know. she had brown eyes. Maddie's like, Maddie has brown eyes. I know eyes. the killer like had green eyes. eyes. I'm looking up eye color. <laughs> oh, my God. With the, with the U. It was green. Oh shit, wow. that's a good eye yeah, color, actually. Related, they're related. They're actually that's siblings. Nice. I'm gonna start now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Maddie Young is a deaf woman who lost her ability to hear and speak after a bout of bacterial meningitis at age 13, only to lose both permanently after a botched corrective surgery. Apparently, as the movie shows us, she is only capable of hearing constant rumbling. Hoping to advance her career as an author, Maddie lives an isolated life in the woods with her cat. What's the cat's name? I don't know. It's, it's no, we, no. It's oh, not that's right. It's not. What's nope. the cat's name? The, the cat's name is Bitch. That was the, the name on the tag, remember? Yeah. Is it though? Yeah. Yeah, for real. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a cat, not a female dog. That's animals. Well, no, it's animalist of you to assume that a cat can't be It's not be a animalist bit. of me to assume. I've been taught that female dogs are bitches, eh? Right? Oh, and okay. And that is a, that so is a cat, right? Because you, you grew up in this speciesist environment <laughs> where you believe that female dogs are bitches and female cats are not. I've been that... told that's the name of them. I've been told cats are different. Cancelled. Exactly. It's not not my fault. I grew up with Hashtag cancel pog dog. Don't cancel Pog Dog. I'm Poggers. <laughs> we were doing a review. <laughs> yeah, I want the details. This is gonna keep happening. Don't like. This, I've already. I wanted the. No, I wanted the details. Amy. I've already given up. What kind of cat is it? Oh, a uh, snub nose. <laughs> a snub nose. It's a snub nose cat, like a snub nose revolver. But where are they? Like, <laughs> where are they? A snub no is that a thing? It's an ugly little piece of garbage. That's what it is. No, cats are cool. Cats Persian? are cool. Is it Persian? It might be Persian. Persian? <laughs> Persian because they purr, that's funny. Oh, that's not I don't I love cats. <laughs> They're cool. <laughs> I wouldn't name my bitch though. That's not family friendly. So <laughs> Maddie lives next door to her friend Sarah, which Maddie has literally put in her contact name Sarah next door as if Maddie couldn't remember where Sarah lives without that constant reminder. She could know multiple Sarahs. But like when she scrolled through her contacts, she only had like 8 of them and there was only one Sarah in there. Well, what if she wants to remember that spirit Sarah specifically and she like knew other Sarahs in her head? Put a last. She might not have contacts with like Sarah from work. Does Sarah not like have Sarah... a last name that you could possibly put in there? Well, she never figured it out until later in the movie. She could have asked her, like, "Hey, Sarah, what's no, your last name?" They she were can't, friends. She can't. She can't ask her because she don't have a voice. She can sign to her. That's asking. It's asking, but like physically. That's still a form of asking. And that's still physical. But like she don't. She don't know. Right. Like. She don't know that and language. And she, she, could, language. she could ask digitally. Wait, they they text, though. They literally text. Ex exactly. They literally text. She could have been like, hey, what's your last name yeah, so I can get rid of this stupid next door thing? No, she forgot to do it. Well, that's that's dumb because it was right <laughs> in front of her every... Woman. It was right in front of her every time she, she opened up Sarah's name. About, okay? She's it was a writer. right in front of her every <laughs> single time. She is stupid. How could she be, See, how only could she be worried Sarah's about Sarah day. if she's worried about Aaron? <laughs> I'm not worried about Sarah. She's croaking over on the AC. We haven't even gotten there yet. <laughs> and we never it will. Happened. <laughs> Sarah next door makes sense. Because he wants everyone to know that, oh, by the way, Sarah is the one that's next to work. Yeah, it was for the audience and it was lazy. All right, anyway. It was not lazy. It was she, in exceedingly they lazy. They feel good. Exceedingly to be like, oh, that's the next door when we see her. The most massively talkers. lazy thing I've ever seen in a movie. Bro, she might as well have put, like, she might as well, in Craig's contact information, put my boyfriend that I broke up with because we had a fight. Like, 
There was no she reason for that. She needs to remember these things. She's a writer, right? So she had to write it down that she was next door. <laughs> Yes, she, she had to write it down, that. dude. She couldn't remember. She was like, "Hi, hey, where does Sarah live? I don't know." I don't like this. I don't like this. <laughs> now you know how I feel. All right. Wow. <laughs> so Sarah next door visits Maddie one evening to return a copy of her book, and so that the movie can beat us over the head with the Maddie is deaf plot point. Later that night, after Maddie shows the audience that she is unacceptably wasteful with food, a masked killer attacks Sarah and chases her to Maddie's house. A bloodied Sarah bangs on the door, shouting for help. Her cries go unheard because Maddie cannot hear her, obviously, and the man stabs Sarah next door to death. This was weird to me. Why didn't? Why doesn't she have like a Don't doorbell with a physical cue, like not a physical cue, a visible cue? Yeah, like the no, because, flashing light. No, that wasn't the front door. That was one of the side ones. So, why wouldn't she have a doorbell? Why would you go to the side doors? So, because she came through the forest. Because and she wants and to, we like, later find no, out that's the only in, locked no. door. Yeah, exactly. No, I had a note about that. Hold <laughs> on. To go into Maddie's place, right? You need to go through the driveway. And Sarah came through the forest because she lived next door, and then hit that side door. And said she had that locked because of the cats. And you gotta lock your cat out, of course. <laughs> no, when the cat like went left, like left, the door locked. But later, when we see matting around and locking all the other doors, it means Sarah could have run to any other door and gotten away no, from the she killer. Ran, she ran through that side one because she came from, like, that way. Right, but she could have run so, around to the other doors. But no, she, she, want, she expected her to, like, at least see her, right? That's my favorite thing, too. She's banging on the door, and she's like, see me. What is banging on the door going to do? Because, what are you doing? No, she was hitting the door for the field of vibration. It obviously wasn't oh. working. She tried it for, like, a minute. That's why she tried it more. Right, you should. she should have <laughs> run to the other doors. No. <laughs> All the other doors were glass, unlocked. No, because glass doesn't work like that. She should have hit the side of the wall. She would have felt the vibration. Are you telling me that glass doesn't vibrate? No, but, no that's not how it works. What it do you mean that's not like how that. glass works? Because if you hit it on the side of the wall, you hit the foundation of it. And right. then it'll rumble look. the entire house, but hitting the glass would just vibrate the glass. No, no, no. The fact... Okay, look. Look, look, look. <laughs> look. <laughs> I I like this movie. I don't want to hear this. <laughs> I like this movie. I, fa- I, I actually did like this movie too. The fact that Sarah next door could have run to any other door and gotten away from the killer. No, Sarah ran to that door specifically because she came from that way. But and she that's the could only have run door to any. The house, no, right? no, no, no. That's she the only re- door that she knows about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sarah next door. It's like only there's only one the entrance to this house. She, she could have ran like... to any other doors because somebody was chasing her. She was just wanted to get in. Right, she could have been like, She's "Oh, like, this door is locked. I'm going to check another and door." Behind you, I would be hitting she, that door. Like, hey. The fact that she didn't even bother trying like, oh, hey, any other door is conclusive <laughs> as to why she was killed by this guy in about thirty seconds. When it turns out he was too incompetent to kill a deaf person in an hour and a half. She, no, oh, okay. Now did. it's easy to kill deaf people. No, she didn't. No, it's easier. <laughs> she did no she did not no she offense didn't want to, to any deaf her. people who might be listening because oh, it would yeah. have been easier to kill a deaf person and then like it was, was a stu- stupid thing to do because he's psychotic and he only kills for killing because he it's killed the like a, the kill. he, yeah because he won't because he didn't know, know her so he didn't kill her for like any reason it was just psychotic killing yeah that's another issue i have with this movie he's it's just somebody who just goes around and just kills people as he you know he's first introduced when he kills sarah and, you know, he stabbed her, like, 30 times, which is a little bit much. And this is the killer that will stalk Maddie for the next 65 minutes and will never be given any context or motivation as to why he's murdering people. We just have to assume he's crazy because that hasn't been overused in cinema. I didn't say but, it was the original I mean... movie. I just said it was the <laughs> uh, Actually, I have one problem with that arrow thing. How long it takes him <laughs> to load that crossbow makes me wonder of how, like, he got anyone else. And then, like, he on purposely missed the arrow towards Maddie. Did he? Then, I don't think he yeah. did. I think there he sucks. There is no way he would have missed this. Unless he just sucks. He's, he has to be some kind of hunter if he has a crossbow, right? You can buy a crossbow. You can buy a crossbow and still be bad at it. No, he has, no, because it was tracking. What? His tracking? When does he track her? <laughs> She's oh, in the was... house the whole time. It's not hard to track her. <laughs> Like, the only times he didn't is when she distracted him. Like, one of the two times that she distracts him. And then he comes right back. Yeah, that's the only times he did know where she was, too. Because like, they made her think that she went and does something. 
But any other time, he knew where she was, too. Yeah, because he heard her making a horrible racket. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm talking that was, about. Right? Yeah, that's that not... Something that I thought was anybody weird, could too, track like, somebody that's making a horrible racket. This movie would have been so much better if you couldn't hear. Like, listener. <laughs> uh, honestly, I thought about that, it, too. It would have, because you didn't. you would be thinking like this. Exactly, right? dude. She had, like, the only way she could be able to do anything if she sees him do something. And, like, because she can't hear him do something. So she had to be constantly in the corners of the house and go into, like, one room to look at one way in. I'm just saying, if Sarah had been smart enough to try any other door after she tried that one for a minute and, like, this is definitely locked, but I'm going to keep trying it. And if she if she had tried another door and gotten inside... But you need to think, like, realistically, though. Like, if it's, I was getting would, chased, I wouldn't think of it trying another door. I've been like, this is the way in and out, so I'm going to try this door. I'm really this worried about you. Yeah. I'm really worried about you. You wouldn't think about this door is locked, I'm going to try another because one? This is, the, this is a door. Like, this is the closest to being safe. I don't want to go around to somewhere that might it, be safe no, and it's, the exact same okay, thing. It's I the like furthest away from being safe because it's locked. <laughs> That's the closest she had to being safe, right? No. And if you're being chased by someone who is not there right. to kill you, no, that is right. No, right? it's not. It is right. No, she wouldn't not. think about, okay, let me go away from the safest place to go around it to check another door. Yeah, to get inside and then actually be safe. Yeah, but she never figured if that door's locked, why aren't all other ones locked, Taylor? She didn't bother trying, which is why she died. Because she was the getting only, chased by a murderer. The only data that she has is that this door is locked. She does know that there are other doors, but with that data that she has, she has reasoned that all the other doors are locked. We're Which breaking down the character stupid. of Sarah. She's a scientist at heart. Sarah from next door. No, that's a false conclusion Perhaps. to draw. <laughs> I know. That is a fallacy, sir. That is a fallacy. I don't think you could say that. On this show, I don't appreciate Sarah from next door. She's dumb. And how would you know if it's Sarah fallacy? from next door is dumb? It, it's the black John swan fallacy. I, I thought it was John. I thought John was the killer first, and it wasn't John. Then no. I was like, oh, it must be Craig. And it's not Craig. Wait, how did you think it was John first? Because they never like seen anything about John, so you just like figured that John came home and just killed her. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Wow, I didn't, I didn't jump to that conclusion at all. <laughs> that would, that's the first thing I thought of. Like, oh yeah, that must have been John. And then like she put, like, I didn't see her face thing. So then they can set it up for it to be John. And then she would have been like, oh, that's John. Because I thought he was going to do sign language at first. Like, when, they were, when you were staring at her for the first time. Oh. I thought he was about to do some sign language. And some, like, to tell her, yeah, I'm about to come kill you. Ava. Why does the killer's mask look like Daniel Craig? Wait, who is Daniel Craig, though? He's like the newest James Bond. Oh, that's why I don't know who that is. Irrelevant. Does he have the accent? <laughs> no, the mask does. The mask does. No, does, no, does he? Does Daniel Craig have the accent like James Bond? Yeah, he's British. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> James, James is getting a little bit too old for the business. <laughs> okay, um, so we're talking about a movie, and... Sarah got stabbed because she doesn't know that doors can be unlocked. Exactly. She should have just broke through the window. There were so many other things she could have done. Well, they w they didn't want her alive, so she croaked. Exactly. It would have saved us the trouble of this movie. Yes. So, <laughs> Maddie talks to her sister via FaceTime, and there is a particular line where her where her sister says that she wishes Maddie wouldn't isolate herself, to which Maddie responds in sign language that isolation happened to me. This is another side plot that this movie opens that it never fully explains, leaving the audience no choice but to infer what that means. Get used to it, this will keep happening. The man quickly realizes Maddie is deaf and decides to kill her too. He sneaks into her house, steals her phone, takes photos of her, and sends them to her. As Maddie realizes she is being stalked, the man cuts power and sabotages her car to prevent escape. You can you can drive your car on I rims. never knew that. On, like on the rims it'll fuck up the rims and the axles but you can you can drive faster than someone can run can walk yeah run at you on flat tires i know she still could have used it like would it be slower yeah was it still usable yeah definitely well, if you don't know that she's a deaf reader i forgot that deaf people don't know facts about cars wait i'm so, are deaf she's people... a, she don't know wait. that right 
are deaf people allowed to drive? Because I know some people with disabilities aren't allowed to drive. Can deaf people drive? I'm going to look it up. Can deaf people drive? Wow, this is a very common search. <laughs> yeah, they actually can. Okay. Wait, why are you looking that up? How, how much is an all-white Daniel Craig mask? <laughs> Fine, I'll look it Whoa. up. Uh, or did he make it? No, well, he took I'm a plaster of, of like Daniel Craig's no face here. while he was sleeping. He just had Daniel Craig sleeping over. There are Daniel Craig masks you can buy. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm down. That's not even that funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> no, it's hilarious. I zoned out. I was looking at Daniel Craig. Anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Someone likes the accent a little too much. Mm, true. <laughs> so, we're talking about a movie. Um, Maddie writes, won't tell, didn't see face, boyfriend coming home on the glass panel door with her lipstick, but the man responds by taking off his mask and revealing his face because reasons. Maddie attempts to distract Not the man with her car long. alarm long enough to grab Sarah's phone from her body, but fails. You said because reasons? I felt like it was because he wanted her to know that he's going to try and kill her anyway. Right. Yeah, there's a... Because it wasn't, like, someone she knew, then it had to be some kind of, like, psychotic reasons why you would just go kill random people. So it'd be like, oh, you didn't see me? Oh, I bet you're gonna see me now. So now I'm right. have to kill you because you've seen me. Right, I get it. Mm. I understood why. It just wasn't subtle and it just... I don't know. It, it just, It doesn't like, have to be subtle. He's someone with a crossbow and a knife. Subtlety is this a is, good thing. This is Tom and Jerry for adults. <laughs> That's still good, though. God. Okay. <laughs> it, it was a good movie. It was good. Mm. I liked it. It was one of the better scary movies. Mm. That's fine. I mean, you can like it. I just... I, I, it was, though, because there's no jump scares. Like, the only thing you're afraid of is, like, if she's going to die or not, right? I just couldn't get myself to care that much. And most of the time, I didn't get that thing that I usually get. You see, I felt like I cared more about this character than any of the characters in Hereditary. <laughs> Got him. Oh. With, oh. with the characters in Hereditary, I'm like, oh, good, this cult's getting rid of a bunch of boring people who bitch all the time. <laughs> Maddie's a I fucking like writer. Maddie. She provides to society. No, you have empathy <laughs> for her first because she can't hear. And then like from there, like, no way, she's going to get killed too. And then that's like the empathy. <laughs> it's like the scaring part of it. Andy and Hereditary also provided a form of art, though. So she performed. She 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 provided art about herself. The most narcissistic shit ever. Okay, well, you can argue the same about writers because all the characters are sort of a reflection of themselves in in one manner or another. Interesting. <laughs> that's why Katie was a vibe. Eh. Like Katie could. Katie's probably a dancer. She looks like a dancer. <laughs> she could probably vibe. What? Let's let's review her dancing right now. I bet she's a dan freestyle dance teacher. <laughs> Hip hop freestyle dance teacher. <laughs> oh my god. She looks like she looks like she can hit a. She can. She can, she can hit angle. Katie, twenty twenty. I'm bleeping all that yeah. out. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed that. <laughs> Can you bleep the the slogan but leave in KD twenty twenty? You got it. I I want Maddie to like. Uh, do you think Maddie moves back to the city with her sister? Probably. I think after that, I think I would. But after like her hand looked bad too. Though. Oh yeah, like... that was messed oh, up because she needs to do sign language with that hand. She can do one hand, but like twice. <laughs> 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 you know there are some signs that require both hands, right? Should it, if she does like half of one, would you figure it out? I find sign language is like cool. Like that. she could wear a mirror on her chest, so that way. Right. So if she needs to do a a double handed thing, she just picks up the mirror and she's like, "I got this. Don't worry." I love Maddie. <laughs> Maddie anyway, is a vibe. Okay, so we we're talking about a movie. Talking about a movie. Um, the, uh, the killer pockets, um, Sarah's phone as one, as well as one of her earrings for no clear reason other than the movie needed to incriminate him later with Sarah's boyfriend. We also skipped over him knocking on the window with Sarah's hand and waving hi. That was, <laughs> That's right. oh my god. <laughs> oh on. my god. That was that. funny as fuck. Uh, 
No, because no, she didn't hear anything. She only just seen the shadow of us. And like that. Oh, if you couldn't hear, then like you should have just muted the movie. That it's would have been so, so much better. Honestly, that would have been better if there had been. I would have been like I would have been scared. Things he had no clue. But then, like, you can hear, like, the tapping, so you know it's someone. Yeah. Like, the amount of knocking that this killer does on windows and stuff, even after he knows that Maddie is deaf, is just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually makes a lot of sense. I didn't think about Mine's that. Mine's double check. So right? dumb. Triple and then quadruple check. <laughs> so okay, your first sextuple. your first issue with Sarah is she's not checking enough doors, but he keeps checking if she's deaf, and you got a problem with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he already he already has that verified information though. No, one thing that they don't with the movie too though is uh when she was locking the doors from the killer, she actually forgot that one other door was locked, and they done that to make her show that she was in shock and then forgot like something as basic as that. What? When she okay, when the killer was about to come in, right? Because Sarah when first seen him, she locked like one door, and then ran to the next door and locked that door. And then the door after was already locked, and she didn't lock it in time. And then like she forgot that she locked it before, and that was the kind of the shock factor that they wanted to show because like they wouldn't have just made her lock it if they wanted her to lock all the doors, but that one was locked already. Maybe she knew that one was locked because she locked it earlier. Why did why did the killer try that door though when Maddie couldn't wh- fucking Maddie when Sarah couldn't get in there? Still gotta try. <laughs> you can't hate on a man for attempting. Oh yes, yeah, you're right. Apparently, you have to try all of the doors, Jay. Well, the killer did try all of the doors. You'll notice. <laughs> yeah, and then he tried a few windows. Too. So I guess the killer's your favorite yeah, character, yeah. huh? One of the quote- he oh, learned hey, from no. Sarah's mistake. <laughs> No, one of the quotes he said was, like, he already knows how to get in. And then, like, she was like, bitch, the fuck? And then, like... Well, essentially, he was just saying that he was, regardless of the locked doors, he was just planning on busting in anyway. That was kind of what he was talking about. Yeah, no Which was funny, because then he attempted it uh, with the glass doors, and he couldn't get it. And it was kind of funny. Those were some strong-ass glass doors. I really liked that scene, though, where she's uh, writing down his description. Yeah, yeah, that was smart. Um, what if it was part of the story? Hold on, we jumped way ahead though. Okay, hold on. No, but like, hold on, hold on, hold on. No. What if people are reading the story and then be like, "Oh, you just described one of the characters in the story." At the end of a novel, you're like, "Okay," and then there's someone who is five nine with green eyes, tattoo on the side. Can, of you don't know. Died Writers fighting, are cool people. They're you. original people. That actually they could do things. That actually wasn't in the novel tab. That was in the tab she opened up where she was typing blah 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 ending money please. Oh. That could be part of the ending too. You don't know writers. Yeah, Jay. I, I I am a writer. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I know well enough to know did, did that that's not a book. Right? Name that the top that's 10 pretty times you didn't end a novel with blah 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 la 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 money please. I can name all the times because I never have. No, you forgot to say all the, the end times. Thing. Oh, all yeah. the times. Wait, the end. I've never even put the end at the end of a book. You gotta put the end in the book, or it's a forever moving on book. Exactly. How do I know to that's stop why you reading? Add, that's why you add period. <laughs> <laughs> that's the same thing with periods. They're just forever long sentences, unless you add the period or a comma or pronunciation or fucking words. <laughs> what? For now, say pronunciation. That's not a thing where you add like. Punctuation. Or like a hyphen Punctuation. or colon. Okay. Punctuation, nigga, RP word. I was really messed up for a second on that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Okay. Things are fine. Everything's okay. Everything's I'm gonna okay. Do, I'm going to get we're a drink of water right now. Yes, we were. This is. Can we get that on a t shirt? <laughs> we're reviewing a movie. Then put like time six next to it because I'm pretty sure it's how many times we said it. Yeah, <laughs> if yeah, if you guys want your your uh, confusing Nick quotes on T-shirts, we <laughs> haven't made them yet, but we will. I want someone where I put a bag of ice behind a like a fan. And I want a picture, huh? And then just giving off like cold air. All right, that's still a genius idea. It was a callback, Damien. Don't worry about it. Okay, you see. <laughs> I only listened to the uh, first episode, and then I was doing a lot of stuff in New York. That's cool. New York's a state. Isn't that the Big Apple? Or the city uh, no, that the never city's sleeps? the Big Apple. And the city is the city that never sleeps. 
Yeah, I know words. I know things. <laughs> I'm I'm practically I'm practically geometrist. <laughs> Me too. All I can us. name at least three shapes. Square. Curvy. Um, <laughs> pointy. Straight. Straight. And uh, a pointy. Yeah. Yeah. Stop sign. Spindly. Spindly. Uh, Stop signs are like robust. So I'm gonna call it doubtful, or like hesitant, because it like it wants to go one way, and all of a sudden it turns in our way. Technically, is it all just a, like one side? If you just like turn right every single time, would it just make an octagon? But like in an angle. So while attempting to escape through a second story <laughs> window. <laughs> Where were we in this in this movie? <laughs> we're at the part where she's trying to climb out the second story window. Maddie is shot like, in the leg by the man with the crossbow bolt. Why did he take the off the crossbow when he was climbing up there? Because he's an idiot. That's my point. Killers are idiots. You see, you that's when people killer? tell themselves to feel safe. And his name is Ted Bundy, thank you. Does he have a name? Um, Dummy. the man, the man, I like, the unmoved man. I looked it up, and uh, there isn't even a name. The intruder. There's, there's no name even listed for him. So, oh, okay. We'll call him Daniel Craig. So, <clears throat> oh, his name's literally the man. She's being brought down by the man. <laughs> the whole thing was a metaphor the whole time. Exactly. See, you just gotta. Look up the character's name. It's crazy. Okay, so, yeah, he he climbs up onto the roof when he sees her, you know, after he shot her in the leg, and she knocks him off the roof like a beast, and <laughs> um, she takes the crossbow. And it's funny, because, like, she, 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 like, staggers back to the house after, and she, like, removes the bolt, and... Um, she tries to reload the crossbow, like you said, and fails, at which point she threatens him with the unloaded crossbow, which makes him back off, which was really funny because he was like so intimidated by this unloaded crossbow, even though he knew it was unloaded because he saw her fail to load it. Well, she couldn't load it because her leg was like bleeding out. I didn't realize that when you get hurt in the leg, your arms stop working. No, because hey, you have to load it. You have to use like your foot to put pre- like put weight on it so then you can load it back and she couldn't do that with one. that does look that does look like a 150 pound like uh tension crossbow so the, you can see when buddy was force. reloading the crossbow when she got shot at that like he had to do the exact same thing to load it so let alone her doing it now did you call the murderer buddy yeah <laughs> there, there were a couple times that he didn't do that he reloaded it just with his hands a couple times boy i don't know why he put it on the ground like I guess that was like one one time deal. Yeah, so was, they, I think right, he was to trying show to show you. He was trying well, to do the, it fast. One time they showed it. Yeah, he was trying to show they, her how you. <laughs> yeah, see, they wanted to show the audience that like she's gonna have to do that to load up. <laughs> he was like, "This is for later." Yeah, I, we, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's why she couldn't like do it up on the roof because she's like bleeding through the leg. And, like, but he was like, mm, "I'm coming to get you." Yeah, well, she needs to she, do twenty to thirty minutes of cardio a day. Um. She gotta do that cardio healthy, to build that arm strength. Yeah. She looks pretty healthy though. Like, look at the food she was making that she done horribly. Like, it looked healthy. Did she had frozen dinner? Yeah, she fine. threw it in the trash. Because the burned. She that's burned what... one part of it, didn't she? No, have like what... a whole no. side and some gravy. Yeah, she burned like just the ribs, and then she like threw out the rest of it. I was like, wow, that's wasteful. Because what's Disgusting. the food without ribs? Save it for something else. Don't be a wasteful. Walk coleslaw. Like save it for pork chops. Save it for something. It was smart of them to no, uh, they, actually no. set up the dinner burning scene because so then you can she see like, then the later fucking fire she... She later, oh yeah, when that happened, I was like, oh, she's going to use that. But yeah. she later takes five hours to clean a dish while Maddie, not Maddie, while Sarah's outside dying. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, I, if I was there, I wouldn't look through that window, like, because I would, I didn't think Sarah would be out there, like, being stabbed if and I was, If I was Maddie, I'd be looking through all the windows. Why did I censor myself right there? I would be looking through all of those windows because that's too many windows in a house. God. <laughs> No, that's a good amount of windows. That's why we have like, natural light. light's better for your eyes. <laughs> the outside world is better, worse for your health. There we go. 
Because there's a killer out there. She needs to set a tone for her writing. That's why she wanted a lot of windows for that sunlight. That doesn't track. But anyway, um... <laughs> so... And then, like, he... and then she charged her God. MacBook, and then the MacBook almost died. <laughs> and then it almost died again, so it was a close. And then her phone almost died, too. She'll charge her phone. That's what I see. If I cared, uh, she carried her phone religiously, none of this would have happened. I had to set it on her own house. Just assume everything is bad enough to get you, and then you'll be fine. Oh, God. <laughs> Always carry around a 20-inch long knife, 356 Magnum, with 4,000 rounds. Fireworks. Flashing, what are the fireworks least, for? For salvatory after you kill them. You're lighting off fireworks, and the cops show up, and they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? There's there's a person I killed, dead here. I killed, I killed them with my 356 Magnum. And yeah, now that's when you go to fireworks, and then they joins in. No. Everyone's dancing around the body. We are an hour into this review, and this is what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm easily sidetracked. I, I'm not sidetracked yeah. at all. I'm still no, on definitely point. not. I'm on point. Why the name her Sarah? <sighs> <laughs> what does Sarah mean? What even? What is a Sarah? How do you spell her name? There's like 80 different ways to spell Sarah. It had S-A-R-A-H in the movie. Dude, that's a dumb one. I like what? just S-A-R-A. I just like C-E-R-A. Sira? Sarah. <laughs> Actually, the the characters were named after the real-life nieces of um, the of the director. Oh, it's nice to imagine your nieces in the, the, those scenarios. <laughs> I know it was kind of weird, a little bit weird. I was like, That's that kind of that kind of says a lot about how he feels about his nieces. Happy tenth birthday, niece! Here I named you after a movie, and then the watch movie. It's like, oh, that's me, and then like she just gets shot in the leg. He's like, yeah, that's you, that's you. Oh God, that's why they never named the man because that's his name. <laughs> He's named after the director. <laughs> see, see. Was there... That's why they never named him. Mike Flanagan. He did make the Oculus, and that was a fun movie because I get drunk all the time and watch it and scream, don't go in that room, lady, there's an Oculus in there. <laughs> Who's the person that made the Gravity Falls thing? Isn't his name, like, almost up? I thought it was, like, David Alex... Alex Furch. Furch. Alex Jones. Alex Furch? Alex Jones. Yes, Alex Jones made Gravity Falls. Definitely. Wait, we were talking Mike about... Flanagan. We were reviewing a movie, and... Wasn't Mike Flanagan the name of the PR person for the vice president in Veep? What? <laughs> you, you ever watch the sitcom Veep? I'm Canadian. I don't know about vice presidents. <laughs> that makes sense. Prime and you Minister? probably don't watch uh, trashy sitcoms, Jay. No. I watched The Ranch. Oh, I hate that so much, but I do love putting no, Ranch The Ranch. Oh, The Ranch is so funny, though. I, I have a good laugh with your friends. Three episodes. I didn't I didn't like it. There's like six parts. It's awesome. Like seven, I think. So John, Sarah's boyfriend, arrives at Maddie's <laughs> house looking for Sarah. <laughs> the man Are confronts John, at... posing as a police <laughs> officer responding to a call. He delivers a story of how he was rendered unconscious Wait, by an intruder. Okay. <laughs> how would anyone believe that he was a cop? Well, he didn't believe him. Because the guy shows up, he's like, oh, the person knocked me out, and then he took my no, radio he, no. and my... Because John, like, caught him off his words, right? And my wallet and my police well, car. Like, yeah, they took my clothes and replaced them with old killer clothes. <laughs> oh, and they gave me this neck tattoo. <laughs> and they gave me this, like, multiple injuries. I woke up with this tattoo, and I was like, what? What? I just don't know. Yeah, and then, like, but don't don't tell Maddie, though, that I'm the cop, because she's going to try and kill me. Okay, and... Because that makes sense. When, when John tells the killer that Maddie wouldn't be able to call 911 because she's deaf and mute, this is just flat-out ridiculous, because, number one, 911 operators do have methods of communicating 
with people with disabilities. And secondly, FaceTime. regardless of Maddie being able to speak with an actual operator, they still would have sent someone to investigate the call if she had called. Okay, yeah, and the movie... Which she did at the end of the exactly, movie. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> she did at the end of the movie, and so the movie disproved its own point. Good job, Mike Flanagan. They just Flanagan. wanted John the Croak, all right? You ever see whenever, like, it's not Maddie, then they make something stupid? Yeah. Guess, That's pretty much what happened. Because he, he gets all suspicious of the guy and then tries to attack him from behind with a rock. But just as he's about to do that and succeed, Maddie, like an idiot, bangs on the window because apparently she's also blind and didn't see him about to attack with a rock. And it distracts him long enough for the guy to stab him in the neck. So good job, Maddie. You're officially the worst friend ever. Oh, maybe One she was thing worried like... about the killer being hurt. One thing I want to say, though, how long it took to choke him out was actually kind of realistic, and I enjoyed that. Because some movies, like, chokes out people in, like, t- under 10 seconds when, like, it actually takes, like, 5 or 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, look. And then, like, he was at it for a while, and then he just bled out. Look, my whole thing about that, okay, yeah, the, the, like, how long it took to choke the guy out was somewhat more realistic, yeah. But my whole thing... Like, if yeah, you stab he, neck, I you're gonna do this. <laughs> he's, look, he's look, he's bleeding to death, and he puts the guy in a chokehold to buy Maddie enough time to get away, which is great, right? But the movie then proves to us that it doesn't know how dying works because <laughs> it's it shows us that John is choking out the intruder and then just suddenly drops dead because of because he bled out. He would have gradually been growing weaker as he lost consciousness. That's how that works. He wouldn't just suddenly lose all his strength at once and die. What if he had him, like, a Hell's chokehold, right? But then, like, it slowly, like, faded, but he still was choking. <laughs> and then when he just croaked, right? He, then he just stopped. That's not how bleeding and not, it And it wasn't, like, A to B. It was, like, A to, like, slowly to B. Mm-hmm. It could have been like that. I understand that you liked this movie, but... <laughs> I enjoyed the movie because it wasn't, like, trying to be scary. And I know why. It was, like, trying to be realistic, but they made it a bit too, like, lazy on that part. <laughs> On that part. So, like, so, yeah, I wasn't <laughs> scared. I wasn't scared on this. Like, I wasn't, like, terrified of it. I was like, oh, this may, like, this could have happened. But, like, you still get, like, an empathy fear factor. It's like, oh, shit, my girl Maddie is about to croak over. And she didn't. Just, apparently, she had a random corkscrew. Popped the wine with Red Start. And, like, oh, yeah, that corkscrew is coming in the movie. There are just so, there are just so many the things the she could have done differently. Why didn't she have a gun? Everyone should have a gun. Just pop it to get, movie. give him a few rounds. We'll have the killer shoot Sarah, and then Sarah Why shooting didn't at the, the killer. killer. Have a gun? He did shoot and Sarah. Then... Just with a crossbow. Oh, yeah, that's Show right. Sarah. But, like, it's it's better if everyone had a gun, though. And then uh, John well, had, shows no, up and he, he shoots at the so killer. Then it just, it would have been an hour and a half shootout instead of an hour and a half <laughs> game of cat and mouse, yeah. Just give everyone a crossbow instead of a gun. Or just make another movie. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Hush 2. <laughs> Hush. And then, like, Aaron gets killed, like, her sister. The exact same way Sarah does, but instead it's in the city. Then it's Mike Flanagan this time. He's the killer. And then... <laughs> and before the movie happens, someone has made her deaf and mute. And blind. Just... And blind. Yes, there we go. Hush to... Even quieter. <laughs> <laughs> quieter squared. God. This time you can't see or hear anything. I so am it's ready just a to black screen this for an hour. It's a black screen. Sometimes there are subtitles. <laughs> they really improve on since the last movie by just not showing a movie. Damn. Okay. Why are you coming at your own movie that you like? <laughs> I like the movie, but there are problems. But I, I do enjoy the realism of it in a way. But like I there is some there is some things. You're just like, oh come on now. Like, for some reason, for movie. some reason the killer doesn't know how to use uh Roman numerals. That wasn't very realistic. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, the one then five then five then one. Like that made no sense to me. Yeah, that was that was bizarre. I was like, I don't know, I don't know what this weird numbering system is that you have. <laughs> okay, let's let's think about it this way. If you want to be hunted by anyone, you want to be hunted by Mike Flanagan.
I feel like Maddie would be smarter than me in that, though, and she can't even hear. What does is, what is being able to hear have to do with intelligence? Yeah, Maddie would have killed the man and then felt the taste of blood and just went to and go kill like, a war. Fuck, yeah, fuck you, He's John. Got, she, she is going for Greg, Ava. Eh, yes, that's what happens in Hush 2. Hush 2. It's Maddie <laughs> hunting down Goes Craig. after Mike Flanagan. <laughs> And that then they'll like break the fourth cuddle. wall again when there are writers who are like, you can't just put the cast and crew in the movie. Like, what about this scene where we're talking about how we put the cast and crew in the movie? And the killer kills them too, so you're like, like get out of your, get your head out of your asses with this smug, meta-humor bullshit. No, die, wait, die, wait, wait, die, wait. die, die, I didn't, I didn't like the notebook because it was boring to me because I watched Damn it when I was like 12. I thought, and I didn't like it so much, I thought the notebook was death note. So, think of... The notebook, right? But like, it's the writers who makes up the story. So then, like, the story like just didn't happen, right? I watched the movie, so like, the probably movie's the shittier so one. bad. Yeah, you yeah, should watch the anime. And I should, but like, I'm probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I think we scared Jay off. <laughs> I'm on Twitter. <laughs> I'm so, rushed up so much. I'm so sorry. I did warn that I'm not going to be doing anything, so... I knew this was coming. I'm just trying to involve myself, because I enjoy the movie. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, Maddie realizes that any attempt to hide will result in her bleeding to death, and any attempt to escape will, will result in her being caught. The movie illustrates this by showing us an imaginary murder cop-out, where, where Maddie gets killed, but it turned out that's just what she imagined would happen. Maddie decides that her only chance for survival is to kill the man in a bizarre scene where an imaginary version of herself is lecturing her that she's being dumb. The, the part where she's saying, How long before you, can e before you can't even walk? Or stand? Or see? I wanted her to be like, Or hear? Oh, right, sorry. I, I, that, I'm, I'm you. I should have remembered that. I, sorry. I thought that was like her mom because she said she hears her mom's voice in her head. But then it was also like the visual was Maddie. Well, she is her mom's age when she was 13. What? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I, I think eventually I think you you're become bending your over backwards age, to defend this movie. <laughs> like, Me? Just then, yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I like that part because she said she always has like seven different endings to everything. So she thinks of every possible outcome. And I was seeing and, this like, as her writer brain of in every overdrive because outcome, she has to survive. Yeah, I got and, it. And like, I just and then, didn't. Like I don't. Want, I don't want to break it to her, but like, that's the definition of anxiety. I'm just saying, woman, or paranoia. One of those two. She's being hunted by a killer. It kind of makes sense that she's anxious and paranoid. paranoid. Yeah, and then like, if you watch the movie enough, you'd be like, oh yeah, no, she wasn't just running like that. So you already figured that that she was just thinking that. And, like, over an hour into this movie, she has this epiphany that she has to kill the intruder, as if she hasn't been kind of trying to do that for almost an hour already. I'm, I just, uh, I'm just so tired well, like, at I this think, point. No, I think it's more of a, like, surviving thing. And then she realized, yeah. like, no, the only way to do it is if I say kill her. Yeah, it felt like she was more escapist. Yeah, but she also yeah, was she, trying to kill him. Name the top uh, It was a mix of, like, distraction, survival, and killing, but then, and then it just turned to, like, I'm just going to straight murder this person. Yeah, but the multiple times that she was trying to load the crossbow even before this epiphany, I mean, what was she, like, I, I don't know what her goal was. If she it got to mad because she got She was going to write was, like, a message a rage murder. and shoot it into the next town over. <laughs> no, give, no, to give the note to the cat, and then the cat would just go, like, tall for help. Start meowing at someone. What was on like the number on the like the house though? What oh if you, like, yeah. Just, just like set up like a fishing rod in front of the face of the cat, right, and then put a treat there, and then give her a note, and then she just keeps going straight until somebody picks her off, and then he gets the number and like the note saying like f f the man's after Mike. Mike Flanagan got mad, and then like <laughs> and then they they calls the house right, and then they don't get an answer, and it's like wait a second, this might be true. Yeah, and you put blood all over it to make sure you're right. Just just to confirm that it's not false. I'm so... <laughs> so outside, the man catches and threatens Maddie's cat with a knife before Maddie shoots him in the shoulder with a bolt. While retreating into the house, she drops the last bolt outside the door. 
Before she can grab it, the man slams the sliding door on her wrist and smashes her hand. When he threatens to enter the house, Maddie writes, Do it, coward, on the door with her own blood in a grammatically incorrect fashion. As the man begins bashing the door in with she a tire backwards. iron... That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But she didn't put like, a, a I, I comma would... before oh, coward. Oh, she didn't put a comma. But she didn't she put a fucking... comma. She, she paused. She paused. She's a writer and she didn't put a comma. Was... She's a writer and she didn't put a comma there, which is like she, she, she had so plenty of blood. Grammarly.com. <laughs> Every time it was the real life version of a comma when you pause. She paused before writing coward. It doesn't matter. She didn't. She, she was writing. So why didn't she write comma anyways? We oh, don't know okay. if Mike Flanagan knows Let's that. just waste all of her blood on commas. She's now. got She's got plenty of blood. It's one line. She'd be fine. <laughs> if she okay, was, worri- she if she was com- worried about that, that. If she was worried Let's about that. You. No. If she Let's, was worried about that, she would have gone back to the lipstick. She wouldn't have done it in her blood <laughs> in the first place. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> That was, she's Let's a writer. You say that when you're writing commas with your blood. blood. I'm not going to write things in my blood. I will find something to write with. I'll make sure to write coward in my blood next time. Don't. No, no, you gotta, you, you gotta not forget the comma. The cow, she had the coward. Right. She like paused. What if she forgot how to spell coward and she needed that pause to spell it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was trying to remember. She was like, oh, is it an E or an A? Um. How do you How write that backwards, backwards thing again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do I do a backwards W? Oh, yeah, it's the same. No. <laughs> That's funny because same thing. Somehow you guys are making me want to rewatch this movie just with us talking shit over it. We could. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the guys start, he gets mad, right? And so he starts. Because he got called a coward. Right. Yeah, what, Very what a baby. Mike Flanagan didn't like that. What, what a baby did. So, I don't like being called a coward. He's supposed to be the cat. Cats aren't cowards. Have you ever heard the term Frady Cat? What do you mean cats can't be cowards? Have you ever heard of the Frady term squirrel. Poppy Cat? It's unrelated, but yeah, I guess. So I made up a version of Copycat. Mike finally I didn't want to kill it. <laughs> copycat version of him. <laughs> because I didn't want to be the same as everyone else. I used Doggy Duplicate instead. Who's the actor of the man? God. It's unbearable. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm getting off track on purpose now because it's fucking with you a little bit. I, I know you John are. John Gallagher Jr. It was his son. <laughs> wait, what? I'm going to get back on Twitter. <laughs> wait, hold on. Wait. Mike Gallagher is the person who created John Gallagher is the man. Wait, wait was no. it? No, it was Mike Gallagher. Not Fla- no, it was Mike Flanagan, not Gallagher. That was You're so really- close. You're oh my! I thought it was the sun for a second. I was about to have like an epiphany. I was about to light off. That would have been funny. Do it, coward! He goes to the he goes to the car, and he gets a what? A tire a iron. Tire iron. Yeah. And he starts bashing in this glass that is made out of some Bullet sort proof. of yeah alloy that just keeps him the fuck out as she writes down his it's description. It's bulletproof because he, no one can have her books. They don't want to break in for her books. She has dozens of copies upstairs. That's just selfish. <laughs> yeah, imagine how much money they can make off that with her name. So she arms herself what, with a knife and locks herself what, in the bathroom. Uh, what if the killer isn't there to kill but to steal the books, but then he goes to the wrong house and has to kill him? The, okay, if you're not there to kill people, why did you come armed like that? I'm four paragraphs away from the end oh, of this she, review. She, Maddie's about to make bank off her, like, death. I'm <laughs> gonna be sick. Jay, I believe in you. You can make this. I'm four paragraphs away right now, dude. <laughs> it's, like, crawling towards the end. I'm, uh, why is he a junior? Then who's, like, John Gallagher Senior? Probably John Gallagher Sr. John Gallagher Jr. What, has he been in other movies? Oh my god, he looks like he's Irish. He's an American actor and musician known for originating the role of Mortise to Phil and Duncan Schleck in Steven Cigar's rock musical Spring Awakening. Yeah. He got a Tony Award for Best Featured Actor in a Musical. You're making Jay do that. <laughs> He's 1.75 meters tall. He sounds like he sounds like a constipated cow. 
That was actually really done well. Thank you. So, failing to break through the door because he's a little baby, the man opts to crash through the bathroom skylight, unbeknownst to Maddie. Dirty little crime boy. Um, because for some reason she doesn't feel the vibration of him dropping into the tub behind her, even though the movie made it clear in the beginning that vibrations is one of the way is one of the things that she uses to navigate. I don't think you um, do. I think a tub like cut all the vibrations. That's not uh, no. I don't uh, think you I'm would sorry, feel that if it's, it's from a tub. Works. I don't know she how vibrations le- work, but I feel like it would just not. Work. She was leaning against the tub, and he yeah. dropped into it behind like she, her. No, There's like no way she wouldn't have felt him. that. I don't think it's she still, leaned against it. I think she almost was. Even if she wasn't touching it, it would have vibrated from the tub's legs into the floor. How much blood loss did she have? Does, does oh, blood she hurt, loss like, yeah, affect she your ability like, to feel vibrations? It could have well, like slowed down your no, skills and not feel this. Well, it, like. <laughs> She still is aware enough to attack him after he breathes against her because neck. Because she felt she like realized... the, yeah, the back hairs on her neck felt something, right? I yeah, really... She didn't feel the vibrations. It doesn't make sense. I <laughs> really she like flipped the knife for her answer and it was pretty cool. Okay. It was I, really, cool. I really like what he said, though, where he's like, I think you're holding out on me. I bet if I hit the right spot, I could make you scream. Yeah, I'm going to get that tattooed across my chest. The... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm gonna get Mike Gallick and like across my like neck. This movie certainly hit several spots that made me scream, but not in fear. <laughs> this has to be the scariest movie that ever came out and ever. That's one of the spots. <laughs> I think I'm just delirious at this point. <laughs> I'm full clear vision. I'm just. I am cool three paragraphs away. We can I, get out. I am as clear as day. Maybe this I is this is the actual horror mud. of the movie, Jay. This has been the scariest part. <laughs> what is this? This is the most frightening scared. thing. I'm scared. I want to go home. So she dodges his attack. <laughs> um, you know, like Neo from the Matrix, and stabs him in the knee. Because no, because uh, she's left-handed. Because she had her right hand gun right. <laughs> So she had to use her left hand, which totally forced unrelated. her to use the wrong hand. And made then when she went turn. for the stab, right? And he went for like one, the wrong side. A little bit of right. thinking would have figured out that she had knife on left hand. Like, thinking is not a thing this movie does. So I don't think it was thinking so much as like looking, looking at her. He was looking at her, but like I don't think he was paying attention. You could see her holding the knife in front of her. Yeah, but like on one hand, so he went for the other side, and then like she flipped it around apparently without him seeing it, and then like stabbed him. That slow like, was epic, though. I liked it. Oh, yeah, I liked it. But and if it wasn't bad enough to where he got stabbed and shot, like God knows what, now. like had to finish it off in a very interesting way. She runs and she's hobbling towards the kitchen, and collapses against the cabinet. And we get to see one of the props that she pulled out earlier in use as he comes from the bathroom to the kitchen. Insulting her? I forgot exactly what he says. And she sprays him in the face with wasp killer. Oh, Which that Which made me burst out laughing. Also, after she stabbed him in the knee, she totally... He dropped his knife. She totally could have yeah. picked it up and finished the job. That really had messed up. It would have saved us the rest of this movie, but... It, they had to drag out Everyone the runtime. Everyone wanted a corkscrew ending. Mike Flanagan it was like, it's like the equivalent of when Steve Harvey asks a hundred people. Right? I was ready. I was ready for any Mike ending. To die, right? Any then, ending. I was ready for. It didn't matter if it was a corkscrew or not. I was ready for her not. to croak over. And then any ending. You would have accepted any ending. I just wanted it to be over. The killer is just like that bad. You know what? Maybe there's a way we can work this out. You're kind of a bomb bitch. I like the way you've been taking uh, my stabbings. I can't, we can get together and make <laughs> little rider babies who can't hear. No, they're going to become Bonnie and Clyde. This would have been my favorite movie ever if that had happened. Uh, oh, really? man, Maddie. I would have nominated this for best movie I've ever seen if that had happened. <laughs> You're like, it completely subverted all of my expectations for a horror Hush film. Too, when they got were in the no. old folks' home and he no, kills they... her after they've lived a fulfilling life together. I predicted everything that happened in this movie like five to ten minutes before it happened. No, 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 no. Hold on. Bonnie and Clyde, right? But like... Two and a half paragraphs away from the end of this movie. Now, hold on, I'm almost done. Mm-hmm. I just gotta think of words, right? Okay. I, yeah, I have something to say after him, but it's like... literally three words. Ben Affleck, Daredevil. 
That's not what I wanted to say. But <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie yeah, and Clydesdale. Female is that a Daredevil. Thing? It's like Bonnie and Clyde. But it's Bonnie. What is the man Clydesdale. is the feller from Garbage Day? <laughs> what? So she disorients the guy with insecticide <laughs> and her visual smoke alarm, but he regains the upper hand by strangling her. On the verge of death, Maddie grabs a corkscrew and plunges it into the side of his neck, finally killing him and getting us that one final step to the end of this movie. It'd been funny if she the end of this to, like, review. Maddie retrieves her cell phone from the man's body and dials 911 before stumbling outside, sitting on the porch, um, and her and cat smiling. rubs against her. The blue. The police approach her because they got there in like five seconds, I guess, or she passed out for a while. I can't tell what happened. No, it actually, it took a bit. Maddie closes her eyes, pets the cat, and smiles like an absolute psychopath, probably thinking about what a wonderful next book this will make in her series. That's the first thing I had. Like once you seen the hand, I was like, "This is gonna make a cool second book." <laughs> like screw the ending of the last one. Just start a new one right now. Okay, so like, this movie is somewhat interesting i'll give it that but it really just runs through every horror trope there is the only exception being that the main character doesn't have a properly functioning auditory cortex and is therefore more oblivious than a horror movie character usually is which is an excuse if but, you so, so listener if you want to kill some time this movie is a good way to do it but it won't deliver anything you've never seen before it's like it's yes yeah, it's, it's kind of like a fun popcorn movie is how i feel about it right it's a it's original in its like own way, but like it's still cliches to hell of itself. Yeah, exactly. I really, I really hoped uh, they were they would go for more of a Home Alone thing when she was thinking <laughs> about <laughs> no, no, because because she was thinking about all of the possible ways that she could get got. <laughs> no, like <laughs> she could use this to her advantage, though. She could Home Alone this bitch. She could put some marbles on her loft stair and have them fall down the stairs. <laughs> There's so the much MacBook that she Adam. could have done to not be stupid. Just make it Cat and Jerry. Cat and Jerry. Cat and Jerry. Oh no! <laughs> the man and Jerry. <laughs> you can't. You know, you can't use Tom and Jerry. That's copyright. So Cat and Jerry. Yeah, you could do Tim and Larry instead of Tom and Jerry. Actually, the cat just kills everyone, even the cops. That would have made it a better movie. That would have not made it a better movie. <laughs> For some... I would have been so No, happy. because they wanted to do a realism thing, and they didn't want to do it. They could have made it worse. This movie was like Friday the 13th if the main protagonist was deaf and Jason Voorhees was a little bitch baby about being stabbed. That's pretty much what this movie was. Okay, Jay. How do you feel this stacks up to other Blumhouse film productions? They're a good like, company, mm. too. They aren't terrible. What else have they made? Uh, I believe they did Truth or Dare. Big one. That was terrible. <laughs> I love that one because I was laughing the entire time. And this was back in the day when theaters were open. There were four people who were like, huh. that movie was so good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so good. Do you think they'll do another one? It looks like they're doing Wait, a sequel. They, don't and I, and they, did, they did a good one, sir. The Purge. Didn't watch oh, Sinister. did it us? They did Thriller, Paranormal Activity, thriller. Happy Death Day. I'll give them like a five. I'll give the movie like a six. I like the movie. Out of what? Yeah. You don't want to know the other number. Six? It's a What's six out of nine, boys. I don't know. It just, it just, the whole, the whole thing just felt really average. I was just kind of bored. Well, I didn't think it was, I didn't say it was going to be original. <laughs> I just said I enjoy this movie. I don't have that it's good a of a fun case. slasher flick. Fun is generous. If you if you just put yourself in the shoes of a murderer. Mhm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fuck this movie shit. <laughs> <laughs> so tired. I'm hungover. I shouldn't be at this. I, I slept for two hours and I feel great, you guys. It's because you're I being so pessimistic. Great. That's, that's I'm so guys. happy I woke up to watch my Bro, favorite Bro, I'm pessimistic movie. even when I get all the sleep that I need. Honestly, me too. I don't like piss, so I can't be pessimistic. <laughs> Do we have anything else to say about this movie? I reached the end of my notes and the end of my tether. Oh, okay. Quiet. 
So you're just that much closer to being just shot out into the ether? I'm ready. Let's go to Nether. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> I want to see the new Nether update. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like it. Soul I'd Sam rather watch sold. Minecraft grass grow. That'd be cool if they do. I'm on maximum render distance and I still can't find who cares about this movie. <laughs> oh, no. Got him. <laughs> I'm gonna do the outro now. I believe in you. Okay, Jaden. <laughs> Well, that brings our review of this week's selection to a timely end. Thanks for joining us here on the weekly WhatsApp, and until next time, this is Jay and the rest of the crew reminding you to keep producing art so we can keep making fun of it. If there's anything you'd like us to review in the next episode, you can send it to contacttww at gmail.com or tweet to us at the WhatsApp cast. Huge thanks to my co-host for joining me this week. You'll find their social media sites in the description below. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time. I'm leaving this podcast forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking over. It's my work. I'm so tired. <laughs> For our hundred episode, can we have a can we have a battle royale oh. podcast where every twenty minutes someone gets voted off? <laughs> I can never be voted off. Like there are many moments, many many moments during this episode where I just totally zoned out, <laughs> and I came back in, and I was I just didn't know what was happening, and then I, I mentally left again. But the thing is. Like, I have to edit this episode, so I do have to go back and listen to it, and I don't know if that means if I win or lose. <laughs> you can experience it again. It's so much you, better. Uh, record yourself, like, editing it, so that you can, yeah, if you zone out, then you watch you editing, you, like, you listening to the podcast. That's too meta for me. I'm too tired. Of <laughs> so if this episode is just the intro and the outro, did we do a good job? <laughs>
<laughs> I lived without a jugular for years. Awesome. It's impressive. I think 15% chance you have to live, you got to have jugular with a corkscrew, and I think he had that 15%. I think someone wanted him to live, and he lived, and he became a nice human being who just helped Maddie with stuff because she was deaf. But even the, though you uh, can do everything yourself, clearly. I can't find any. She just wanted to be there to help. I can't find any statistics for this, so I'm sad now. But I was gonna, I was gonna jump on this with statistics and be like, "Ha!" But there's nothing. You were going so. to own him with facts because and logic. <laughs> exactly. You can't own me with facts and logic. I am my own facts and logic. <laughs> I know other people like that too. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, I actually, had this weird moment where um, when. John, Sarah's boyfriend, showed up and he said, I'm looking for my girlfriend. I thought it was supposed to be Craig and I got really annoyed because I was like, it showed him as a black guy and then he shows up as a white guy and I was like, I was about to be so upset and then he said, then he was talking about Sarah and I'm like, oh, that's Sarah's boyfriend. Got it. Got it. 